In this video, go from a pixelated mess looking like a game from the 1990s to this glorious futuristic masterpiece. If you're going to spread managed democracy like a real hell diver, you'll need to be optimised. From your stratagems, to your equipment, to your outfit and even your battle cry. But before all of that, you'll need to optimise your graphic settings to ensure you're free from the crippling performance issues as you defend Super Earth. These following settings are all aimed at optimising the performance of this GPU hungry game based on my own in-game testing and some research, pointing out which settings you can crank to the max with no issue, with others that you may need to turn down a bit as they offer little to no benefit gameplay wise. Obviously, these may end up being system dependent, and if you have a top spec rig then maybe you can crank a few settings up, however, there may be some 500kg knowledge bomb stratagems in this one for you too. First up then, the texture setting. This setting only affects certain textures, as Helldivers 2 will automatically render in the highest quality textures for most surfaces as long as you have enough VRAM regardless of the texture setting you have selected. Just set it to medium or high depending on how much VRAM you have and let the game do the rest of the thinking here for you. Object detail quality is next, and this one is going to adjust the quality and level of detail in certain objects and character models. At the lower end of the settings you are generally going to see more objects pop in, especially on the battlefield, which can be immersion breaking. Fortunately, performance wise there is very little difference between the lowest and highest settings, so you can definitely afford to crank this setting up to high. Render distance affects the draw distance of objects and how far this happens. The lowest option will effectively narrow your immersion as objects literally just won't appear beyond a certain distance and the detail will be limited in anything not nearby. Fortunately, this setting also isn't taxing performance wise and you can definitely turn this one up to high and even ultra to benefit from the extra detail, with only a 3% difference in CPU performance from the lowest to highest settings. Shadow quality is up next and this affects the quality of all the shadows. Realistically, only medium and above offer well defined shadow quality with lower options being blocky and kind of pointless. Performance wise it's not too taxing at 4 and 7% for medium and high, but ultra is in a different league. Medium is fine to be honest, but if you can afford to push it up, high is pretty good too. This next setting affects a ton of things in Helldivers 2, especially the explosions, fires and smoke. At the lowest particle quality settings, all these will be blocky, low resolution and immersion breaking. This one's a little bit more difficult though, as turning it up can massively impact performance, with some effects such as bright lights and muzzle flash giving a 20% performance cost at the high setting. Going from lowest to medium is only a 4% difference and the impact of this will make the game more enjoyable to watch and play without impacting gameplay performance in intense combat. Medium is preferable here for that reason without it being too immersion or CPU breaking, especially at higher levels of combat where these particle effects are in play very often. Reflection quality is next and the lowest option will literally disable all reflections. Low and medium will add quality to reflections with high cranking it up. However, due to the general image quality and occlusion issues from the base of this game, high is not worth it in my opinion as performance wise it's going from 2% at low to 9% at high. Just keep this setting to low or medium as the benefit is negligible especially during combat. Space quality is up next and generally this one only impacts your immersion when on your destroyer looking at the planets and skyline. There's around a 7% performance difference at high for this aspect, whereas when you're not looking directly at the sky, it goes down to about a 1-2% to performance difference. As this one typically doesn't have any impact gameplay wise, I'd probably set this to low unless you're dedicated to taking picturesque photographs for the Super Earth Gazette. Ambient occlusion produces more realistic ambient lighting and it doesn't seem to have any massive performance impacts and makes the game look more alive especially than pesky bugs. This one is easy to just keep turned on. Screen Space Global Illumination is up next, which can add bounced lighting effects and enhance the effect of indirect lights. It only affects the objects rendered on your screen that you can see, and to be honest the visual difference of it is quite hard to notice when it's turned on. You can save about 4% performance wise by having it turned off, so that's what I recommend as its impact during normal gameplay isn't going to be noticed. Vegetation and rubble density can lead to tons of popping, especially at the lower settings. This can lead to your Helldiver getting randomly stuck on items such as rocks and trees that pop in during combat, which is not ideal. 
In the most intensive areas it can have quite an impact performance wise by turning it up, but the bonus is that at least you can see where you're going and be aware of any obstacles in your path. It varies depending on the areas you're in, but generally gives the best overall performance and immersive experience, so you can safely turn this one up. Terrain quality is as straightforward as they come, the higher the setting the more detail you'll see in rocks, sand and other landscapes. You'll get ripples in the sand, more jagged edges on rocky outcrops and just a more immersive experience. Again there's a minimal impact performance wise from low to high and so I'd recommend using either medium or high settings. Volumetric fog quality affects a lot of gameplay in Helldivers 2 as the game relies heavily on it. It impacts the light as it moves through clouds and other particle effects and the difference in its visual quality isn't massive even from the lowest to the highest setting. Higher settings will add more definition to the light shafts as they reflect off surfaces and through gaps but performance wise this is quite a large bump at 12%. As I said there's not too much difference gameplay wise so low is arguably the best immersive option here. Volumetric cloud quality is going to impact the detail of the clouds. Again this one isn't one you're going to notice in everyday gameplay and won't break your immersion. It does have quite a high performance bump though, so to save that I'd look at putting this one on the lowest setting to be honest, as you really can't tell the difference much especially in combat. Lighting quality is going to impact the light effect and how far certain lights reach. It will illuminate larger areas at higher settings, whereas at lower settings areas may appear darker. Low is not ideal, with only a 4% performance gap to medium and 6% to high, therefore take your pick on medium or high. Anti-aliasing is always a sore subject, but can make certain objects appear smoother and add to the immersion. Fortunately it has a low impact performance wise at about 4% and with all these settings now optimised, I think you can safely turn this on to benefit from smoother textures and objects on screen, but it is personal preference at this point. As for the post processing options that are currently available, Motion Blur only has a minimal impact performance wise from 0 to 100 on the scale, but I prefer to have this one on the lower end so I can see what I'm shooting at as I'm moving around. Depth of Field and Bloom also have minimal performance impact and can be safely turned on. As for the image quality setting, there's a number of issues with each and every one for a few reasons, mainly due to no DLSS. Quality, Ultra Quality and Native appear to be the best options out of the box, with Ultra being a bit blurrier and Native adding a shimmery effect. I run it on Ultra Quality due to the performance gain it benefits from, but maybe future graphical updates and the addition of DLSS will change this and improve performance further. Compared to the higher preset options available, these optimised settings will have a drastically higher performance with very little difference in visual quality, but will offer a much smoother gameplay experience due to the less strain these optimised settings will have on your CPU and GPU. Remember this is all just suggested from my own personal experience, but I've had nothing but smooth gameplay since landing on these options. I'll leave my setup specifications in the description so you can compare them, along with timestamps and a full snapshot of each specific setting. Setting. If you have any other suggestions or preferences, please sound off in the comments as you might just help another hell diver out. Now get back to your hell pods and go spread more managed democracy.